Welcome to the Hurdy Bird Internet Broadcast Network. And right before the show, we always like to introduce our mainline sponsor, which is CPR Cell Phone Repair, located in La Frontera, Rum Rock, Texas. If you need fast, affordable repairs for phones, tablets, laptops, and game consoles, your gadgets play a major role in your professional, personal, and school life. And when your phone, tablet, or laptop breaks, you want an expert to handle the repair. That's where we come in. With over 16 years of experience in the electronic repair industry, CPR Cell Phone Repair can get the job done quickly and effectively. Come visit us at our website, cellphonerepair.com. Now on to the show. Hey, everybody. We wanted to welcome you to the Hurdy Burt Broadcast Network, and we are uh, in the State of the Art Studios, just kidding, here in Round Rock, Texas, and I wanted to let everybody know that we uh, like to cover local Austin business. We think it's great that we give them a voice and visibility and help with their brand in the local Austin market. And I've been dedicated for years uh, trying to help small business get visibility and gain their brand. And one of the ways I thought to do that was to actually interview uh, lots of businesses in the Austin area. And I want to thank CPR Cell Phone Repair in Round Rock, which you'll hear a beginning recording when this podcast goes up on demand. Uh, thank them for being the main sponsor for 2016, my exclusive sponsor, Mary. And that's, it's super to have them. And we uh, basically, if you want to listen to the archive podcast, we suggest you go to Facebook and type in the group Purdy Burke Broadcast Network. Uh, and join. I will see that uh, join come through, and I will automatically add you to that broadcast network. And you can enjoy, gosh, I guess now close to 100 shows of Austin Business that I've covered over the last three years. So feel free to go back and listen to those archives, and you can find that on the Facebook group page, Hurdy Burke Broadcast Network. But tonight, tonight on the show, I have Mary with Lukczewski, and I think I said that right, Mary. Did I do okay? You did just fine. It's a difficult see, name. <laughs> you see, in the old days, we just spelled out how it sounds. That way we didn't screw it up on a radio, right? So anyhow, Mary is with Shackley, and you've got uh, the green team. And before I ask you any questions, uh, can you tell what's the green team mean? Well, because Shackley has been uh, in the environmental movement, we, we had one of the first Earth Day products in 1970. Isn't that so, cool? Yeah. Yeah, so been uh, I've been using the product since '76, so <laughs> kind of easy. Well, <laughs> the 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 great thing about having you on is we are also in a network group together, CBLG, on uh, that meets on Fridays, and uh, of course Mary's in that group. And and one of the ways that I get a lot of people on the podcast, and Mary knows this, is I ask for people if they'd like to come on. And Mary's going to fill us in all the details tonight. But I thought it was funny that you started off with this first question for me, Mary. What's the most adventurous thing you have ever done? <laughs> well, I think it, to me, it was starting to learn scuba diving at about in my mid-50s. Oh, wow. Yeah, and my husband and I both had cancer. And uh, so after he finished his nine months of chemo, we thought, you know what? We better do some things we wanted to do. And scuba diving is one of them. And I have terrible claustrophobia. And we were taking um, our lessons um, in Huntington Beach, California. And you have to wear these heavy wetsuits, 7 mil. And it's like putting a girdle on your whole body. And wow. <laughs> it made me feel like I couldn't breathe. And then you have to have a hood on. And then you have to have gloves. And then you have and to have mask. babies. And, well, yeah, a mask. And then you get your uh, BCD, your vest with the tank on. By the time I got yeah. all that on, I thought I... I couldn't breathe. I mean, it was just like horrendous for me. I actually went to a psychologist once to to deal with it. Wow. So that's, <laughs> but once I, I got certified at 60 feet, it's a gorgeous world down there. And do you do that often, or is that just a bucket list thing that you do when you get a chance to? Is it something you continue to do? We, we've done a, a few dives. We're not what I would call experienced divers, but we have dived in the Caribbean and, and in Hawaii. Wow. I bet that's cool. It is. Beautiful. It's amazing. If you ever get the chance. <laughs> Do it, huh? Well, yeah. you know, uh, you know, Danny in our group used to be a diver. 
I know. I know. I wish he was still a dive master because I would yeah. love to go out with him. Yeah, I just didn't know if he knew that or not. So that's pretty cool. So that's great. So you also uh, lived in several different places, right? And of those places, which one's your favorite and why? Well, actually, this is our 18th house that we've lived in. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. And so we've lived on what we call all four coasts. And everybody goes, what? So we've got the East Coast, West Coast, Gulf Coast, and the Great Lakes Coast. And people say, oh, that's not really a coast, but the Great Lakes are huge. <laughs> so you have Yeah, to they there. are. <laughs> there. But my favorite place, and I just think I should have been born there, was in Hawaii. Oh, I bet. Uh, on what island were you on over there? Where, where, which island Maui. did you live on? Yeah, Maui. Maui. We go about every other year. And that yeah, was and another... That I thing after yeah. the cancer we st we st we went there for the first time and I just were you near were you near the Lahana Lahana side or were you Lahana near, yeah uh, yeah yeah and was that back before it was all built up and you could really goof around there and it wasn't too many places or was that since it's been all developed no we started in 2004 I think it was so um, and it's built since then of course oh but absolutely not like back in the old days you know, where you, you had the, the airplanes that weren't jets. <laughs> yep. I, I, but yep. I always felt like I should be on one of those planes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just I, my feet should be in the sand. <laughs> yeah, and you know the road that runs through Lahana, you can go all the way out to the end of the island. Mm -hmm. it gets, it's two lane, gets really narrow. I've heard it's all developed now. In 1983, I drove that all the way to the very end of the island. Scary Did stuff. You? <laughs> it was. Oh, it was, my got, God. But it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Okay. We 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 had four of us, and we were like, "Are we kidding? Are we really going this far?" It was crazy, but yeah, I I love Maui. That's a great place. Well, that's super. Yeah. Would you ever live there again? I would in a heartbeat. There you go. Yeah. So, so we're we're actually from South Dakota, and you okay, know, that I was going to ask you where that you were from. That would be my summer place, <laughs> the, the Black Hills. Well, we grew up in the Plains. My husband and I have known each other since junior high. We've been best friends. And, and so now so, you're going to tell me you rode motorcycles to the motorcycle deal too, right? <laughs> My husband was a police officer and worked in the motorcycle ah, alley. <laughs> ah. I've been. <laughs> That's a nice place to be in the summer. I'm not sure I'd want to be up there when the blizzards come through from Canada. I'm not it's sure not I want to be there for a clipper. <laughs> right. And they're still getting some cold weather, aren't they, right now? They are. Yeah, they just had a snowstorm go through. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, you're with Shackley, and so uh, you've got kind of a fun question for me. I guess when people see your name tag for the first time, they usually say to you what? Oh, Shackley. I remember my mom used to be a Shackley distributor, and she used to give me Shackley vitamins. And <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's probably what I get the most. And the other one is like, Shackley, is that still around? And what wow. I say to those people is, it, yes, and it's not your grandmother's Shackley <laughs> anymore. It's just evolved, and we've always stayed close to nature, as close to nature as possible, so we have natural stuff, but our science is just amazing. So, <laughs> those are, yeah, so, those are the two questions, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and the pronunciation, does everybody mess that up? Because it's spelled S-H-A-K-L-E-E -E and not L-Y, so what's the proper pronunciation? Maybe you can set us straight, finally. Well, it is Shackley. It was Dr. Shackley who, who actually developed the first vitalized mineral 100 years ago. Awesome. And, yeah, I know. So it's his name. And everybody says Shakely because they think of shapes. And that makes sense. Yeah. For the first time somebody's seeing it, I can see him saying that. Yeah. But when you, mm -hmm. but they've got such a good brand, you know, everybody should know to say Shackley, right? They should. They should. Well, that's I, good. I don't so, take offense at it. Just like I don't take offense if people mis mispronounce my name. <laughs> right. I got that, though. That's not me. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, um, yes, you did. So you've been, um, my one question you don't have in here is, uh, I, I guess, how long have you been associated with Shackley right now? How, how long has it been? Well, actually, it's been 40 years this year. Okay. So you've been with them a long time. Mm -hmm. You've seen this thing evolve over the years, um, and 40 years. I know. That's, that's a long time. It's a long have you time. Been take, have you been taking the products for all 40 years, too? Yes. 
Wow. And I, I really attribute that to our surviving, you know, cancer and thriving afterwards and being right. able to surf at 60. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the bucket list just going a little bit longer here. Surfing and, skin, and scuba diving. All right. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I am a water girl. <laughs> so who introduced you to Shackley? I'm curious. Well, actually, I worked at Sears at the time, and it was just someone who worked with me. And uh -huh. what, what she said was, we have this biodegradable cleaner that's really concentrated. Would uh -huh. you be interested in looking at it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. It was 1976. And um, so, and wow. my kids over the years bathed in it, so my kids would get clean, and I wouldn't have a bathtub ring. So it's and you're, very safe. you're talking, and you're talking about basic age. Basic age, yep. The, that was the Earth Day product from 1970. Can and, you tell us a little bit about that product too? Well, its uh, its main ingredients are corn and coconut, and it it does a really good job of cleaning. Two drops in a spray bottle is the equivalent of a, a bottle of Windex. So one bottle that costs $10.35 replaces 5,000 bottles of Windex. So it's so once, very cost effective. <laughs> so, so once, Mary, you make a sale to somebody, they're probably not going to buy a little bit for pretty well down the road, right? Well, if yes, basic age. It, it takes quite a while to use that bottle. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's cool. And John used to use that on his ships because it doesn't harm the marine environment. Yep. By the way, I use that product. Do we you? have it here. Uh, we use it as a we use <laughs> it as a cleaner. We've even used it to on some plants um, yeah. and things. Uh, we looked up some of the stuff on what agriculture and Texas A M and they, the basic H is used in some plants to kill the aphids and, and stuff that are on them. So we use it for everything. We love it. That's why I asked you if that was basic H because that's a great product. So it yeah, is. Thank really you. good. I, mean, I did not know you used it. So there you go. Absolutely. Absolutely, basic age, great, great product. Um, what would you want your listeners to know about you? I think that, well, that I am a grandmother of nine, and I have five great grandchildren so far. Wow! But I really care about people and the environment, and that's what's kept me in with Shackley all these years. Um, and other amazingly, I'm gonna go. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just, just basically that, that I really do care about people, and I really want them to be healthier. As we age, um, that's just something. I mean, I think I'm a good role model. I'm 66 and still still moving. Yep, still kicking, and that's a good thing, right? And, yes. and I will say this. Um, obviously, not only do you get to build the products with the company and use them yourself and help others with them, I guess you have the ability to build an organization around yourself with Shackley also, right? We do, and it's um, we're almost 2 million strong now. And the, the length of time, the average length of time uh, that most members have belonged is uh, between 14 and 17 years. So wow. um, obviously the stuff works or people wouldn't continue to order. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a testament to time, right? Yeah. And actually, this week, um, some of the earners um, have uh, earned a trip to Cabo San Lucas, and so they're posting on Facebook their all-expenses-paid trip to Cabo San Lucas. That's and terrible. And yeah, how long do they get to go? A week? They just get to go lay week. around and, and eat it's, food it's and swim. <laughs> Man. That's right. And one, our big trip next year that you could earn is uh, to Machu Picchu in Peru. That is awesome. Isn't this? And, and, and the thing that you can leave your wallet at home, right? You can leave your wallet and, at home. Mm -hmm. And just go and have fun and meet other people and get inspired and see what they're doing and hang around with peers that are excited about a business. That just sounds like a blast. It is. And, you know, I, having moved into so many states, I've always found a Shackley group that has welcomed me and um, I've been able to be um, a contributing person to those um you know, in Southern California and in Houston and South Dakota and Ohio, all of those places have welcomed me as a, as a Shackley person and we're family. Yeah, and when you have 18 houses in different parts of the country, I imagine you get to meet a lot of people, so that's yeah. a good thing. Wow. So what are some things that people uh, might come to, a, you know, if they want to get to know about you that might be a surprise? I always try to use that as a fun question. 
group that might be able to surprise. What might surprise others about you? Oh, golly. Well, I don't know why that's such a, uh, that um, I am a, a cancer survivor, that uh, I, because most scuba people diving, think I am. Scuba diving, surfer. Surfer, scuba diving. I said surfer, scuba diving, yeah, 18 surfer, houses. Scuba diving. And, and yesterday I, I tried iFly, which is a, um, a, a skydiving simulator. No. Oh, did you go up to the one on 183? I did, yes. Tell me about that. I'm curious. I, I, I know we're on podcast, but did you actually get in that and do it, or did you watch? Because that looks fun. I got in there. I have, I don't, remember when you were a kid and you were in the back seat and parents were driving down the highway and they had to, it was hot and you had all four windows open because they didn't have air conditioning? Yep. I could never breathe in the back seat because of the air rushing at me. That right. was the sensation I had yesterday. The same thing, and right? So I got in wow. there, and I just wasn't able to fly. I got a little bit off the grid, and, and I was like, I, I just feel like I can't breathe. But, yeah, because um, the air is falling up so it, fast. It is really such a, a volume of air, yeah. And I, if I stayed in there, I mean, because I had to with scuba diving, too. It, every time I go scuba diving, it's hard to let go of the air and know that I can breathe through my mouth, through this regulator. And, right. you know, had I give, you know, probably the next time I'd be able to do it. I could probably actually jump out of a plane better than I can do the iFly experience again. Yeah. You might have claw marks on the, on the plane somewhere, but, <laughs> <laughs> but if I have somebody I'm attached to, I can probably Push. go out the door. Leap of faith. Leap of faith. Right? Yeah. <laughs> After about 30 minutes of circling. Push me out. Just push yeah. me out. Oh, That's you may have to push me out at this point, but... That's why, that's so funny because about 15 years ago, our son was visiting us from college, and we were in California, and we were going to go skydiving. And then we saw an ad for um, uh, people to be extras in the movie, and in movies, and so I said, well, let's go get our headshots instead and get an agent. Well, he luckily went back to school and got an engineering degree because, you know, he's very grounded. But I actually went on and got an agent and did five commercials. I oh, auditioned unbelievable. in Hollywood. <laughs> See, that's, now that's a surprise, okay? I guess that's so. cool. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so oh. let's write adventurous next to your name. And see, I don't think anybody in our group has any idea about this stuff because you only have X amount of time to speak, right? And this is right. what's going to be so cool. They're going to learn all this fun stuff about you. So uh, what kind of, do you mind me asking what kind of commercials you were able to audition for and be on? I was actually on, my first commercial was actually what I called an ambulance chaser one. It was um, uh, lawyers who were um, right. hurting people who, for elder abuse. And then um, one, uh, let's see, one was for a place like CarMax. Uh -huh. And then I auditioned cool. in Hollywood for a Sprite commercial. Oh, cool. And also to be uh, Kurt Warner, the football player. Yeah. To be his mother, you know, on the Campbell Soup commercials. Really? You know, you always think, those are not their real mothers. Those are actresses. Well, I figured that. Yeah, but, but sometimes they are But a lot of people so don't real. know that. Yeah, yes, a lot of people so, don't know that. I actually asked the director when I got there, so are some of these their real mother? And he goes, no. No, no. <laughs> and, all actors. and the funny thing is, so I think they don't always know what they want until they see something, because at that time, it was before my LASIK surgery, I had thick glasses, and I had to wear them to read the script, because they yep. put it on a board. <laughs> and the board yeah. was like 10 feet away. And I had to keep my glasses on. And I wasn't chosen to be his mother. And it's really funny because actually my son resembled him. I mean, they look somewhat alike. But right. the commercial came out for the Campbell Soup with his mother being younger, wearing big glasses and tossing the ball to him in practice, it, like when he was 10. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I gave him that. I must have given them that idea. <laughs> There you go. See? There you go. Well, that sounds fun, and you probably love doing that, too, I would imagine, huh? I did. That was a, bu a bucket list thing for me. I always thought I would be good in commercials, and so I thought when I got there, I was 50. So I actually tur uh, get, filmed my first commercial the day before I turned 50. Wow. And, yeah. So it was. So I'm actually, I'm actually scared to ask you what's left on your bucket list. Oh, golly. You know, I don't even have one written down. 
Okay, it's just, but, you just kind of discover it as your adventurous <laughs> self goes along, right? I do. It, well, and so the surfing thing was on my sister-in-law's bucket list. We were in Maui. She said, when I think of Hawaii, I think of surfing. So yeah, let's absolutely. take surfing lessons. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm with you. That's like yesterday with the iFly. This lady, it was on her bucket list, so I went with her. And uh, so I was able to, I actually did surfing lessons. I've surfed the bunny waves. I don't go out in the deep water, but... Um, I'm at, I was actually able to stand up, and man, when you get on that board and you look up, if you look down, you fall. It's just like anything. That you look makes at the sense. You're going to fall. That but you can really scoot along on bunny waves. <laughs> <laughs> you go faster than you think, right. And yes, it's got to be do. fun. Yeah. And they teach you I how know. to fall off and not hurt yourself, so that that's takes away that fear. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, that's, I'm just amazed. Mary, that's cool. All right, I'm just going to say that. All right, so getting back a little bit to uh, your your biz, um, you have a special passion for a cause. Do you mind telling us what that cause is? Tell us a little bit about it. The cause is to let people know that heart disease is the number one killer of American women. My mother died actually at my age wow. uh, after five heart attacks and open heart surgery. My dad died at 55. Um, of five heart attacks. My brother had open heart surgery at 42. Wow. And uh, so I always tried to eat healthy as I, you know, a young mom and, grow, and, you know, raising children. And then they started having this statistic. It kills uh, one in three women die mm -hmm. from heart disease. And it's Something you don't hear about a lot. Every minute. Well, and we don't survive heart attacks as well as men. And they think... It's kind of a stereotype that women are more nurturing and they take, you know, they do, do the meal planning and they're more encouraging, whereas the, right. the husbands are more, you know, hands-off, if you will. Now, my husband's yep. the opposite. He's great at meal planning. I know he'll make me go on a treadmill if that ever happens. But, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that is a passion of mine. So that, is, that does go right along with my, with my Shackley because we have such great products for health, heart health. And, and I that's think part that's of your one message. of the reasons. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. I said that's part of your message then. Okay. It is part of my message. And uh, I had a, a, a cardiac angiogram done when I was about 56. And I was waiting for bad news. I mean, my mother had died, you know, a few years before, but still, I it was a big worry. And I'm on the table, and because you're, you know, fully conscious. And the doctor says, your arteries are clear. And I'm like, it's got to be the Shackley. It's got to be something different, right, because of all yeah. the hereditary gotta stuff your family went through. Right. So something had to change those biomarkers. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. So, so you had to jump up and down for joy on that. I would imagine that's always great news with your family history, right, that you got it that is. report. It was terrific news, yes. And good for you for having the courage to even go do it. Well, you know? I guess I, I always want to be proactive. Well, that's good. A lot of people don't do that, though. Mary, mm -hmm. you know that, mm -hmm. and that's good that you're helping them out. So what uh, type of, if you don't mind me asking, what, no, don't get into details, but what products do, do you use uh, for that that come through Shackley? Is there a couple of them you take? For the heart health, yes, we have a, a cholesterol reduction complex, and I showed it to my cardiologist, and uh -huh. he, uh, he read the information, he said, yes, you can take this. This has plants, sterols, and phenols, again, close to nature. Good so stuff. He, he, yep. And, of course, the omega-3s, ours are pharmaceutical grades, so they are right. pure. Yeah. So well, those I'm are gonna... two of the main things. <laughs> yeah. And you've got a whole ton of them. And, and what I recommend with Mary is, guys, um, you need to meet her, number one. She's great. But she's so easygoing, and when you meet her, you'll be able to talk to her about this. And that's what I like, Mary. You're, you're kind of soft sell and just like to be around people. So I'm just giving you kudos on this end based on, me knowing you through the network group, you guys will really enjoy her. So, Mary, what? Why do you think it's super important um, to share your message at this stage of life? What What is the motivation? The motivation, I think, is I want to dispel the myth that people, when they hit a certain age, it's just downhill from there. That your life is over. You know, it used to be. You know, in our parents' generation. People would retire at 65. They worked hard all their lives. They retired. And mm -hmm. you'd be reading about their obituary. And you'd be, it's in the paper. 
it just goes boom. But it doesn't have to be that way. And it's a kind of a mindset. But also, we need to, there's a great book. It's called Younger Next Year. That's the men's version. And Younger Next Year for Women. And it advocates that you need to spend 30 minutes a day getting your heart rate up to 65% of maximum. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes a day, six days a week for the rest of your life. You need to stay mobile. Don't sit in a chair. Don't, you know, everybody likes to watch TV anyway, but you got to get up and move. Walk the dog. Yeah, walk, garden, walk your do dog. Something. I walk my dog two yeah. miles every morning, fast walk, you know. Just yeah. get out and move around. It's time to think, clear your head. It just feels good, right? I know. It does. And it just keeps, and do something that stimulates your brain. I mean, there's so many games on the computers now and on your cell phone that you can, yep. I'm, I'm always playing like brain age something or, something like that to keep your, your thought processes moving. Because, you know, once that starts, I mean, so many times you see people, you know, my age, 66, if they're still with us, they are slowing down, their bones are breaking, or what have you. And right. by walking, it's a weight-bearing exercise. It keeps those bones strong. Yeah, and it keeps you limber and yeah. uh, keeps you healthy and feels good. You get outside. I mean, all that, you know, and I like the part you just said about using your head, you know, using your brain. I love right. to read. I love to research new stuff and keep my brain exercised and, and memorize a lot of stuff. You know, uh, it, it, you can wear yourself out thinking. Uh, it's a good exercise is what I'm saying. I like that. Good, good it suggestion. is. It is. Good suggestion. And I've noticed that you, too, I mean, because you're in that field where you've got to stay on top of technology. Absolutely. And, and I, I was in IT at, at one time, and, and I'm kind of that way, too. Uh, some of the new phone things are kind of like, okay, but <laughs> I'm, I'm still, you know, staying up on top of things and sure. getting the latest to as much technology as I can get into my life because, number one, it's kind of fun, and number yep. two, you kind of got to stay up with the grandkids. <laughs> Yeah, and it's fun, uh, you know, and I, I tell people all the time that if you don't understand something, just go type it into Google, look it up, and start following the, the thread, right, and read all about it and take some notes yeah. and be, and, be, yeah. and learn about something. It's really good for you. So the, the brain power and um, keeping our brains healthy is important too, Mary, right, because yeah, totally. we want to keep it flowing and, and keep it, it's a muscle, it needs to be exercised. I tell people that all the time. That's cool. Yeah. And, and meeting again, people, interacting with people. Yep. I mean, we need to keep Don't doing sit that. around and put yourself in four walls and never get out. Get around people. Have some fun. Yep. Man. We do, don't we, on Friday? Yes, we do. <laughs> well, you know, I know people are, are attracted to sit around and watching cable news all day and getting all wound up, right? Oh, I go, gosh. turn the darn thing off and go outside and meet with friends. Go do something, right? Yeah. Get yeah. away from it. My goodness. All right. Well, and that's we're on the, the worst same page. thing you can do at it night is. is watch the 10 o'clock news and then go to bed. And get all wound up. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. And you yeah. wonder why people don't sleep today. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're getting close to our final question. And so I'm curious about this one because I'd really like to know. And that is after living in 18 different places, right, including yeah. Hawaii, Maui, if, uh, to be specific, why do you live in Austin? We live in Austin because my husband retired last year. We lived in Houston at the time. And right. our youngest grandchildren live here. So that's why we're here. Wow. <laughs> and Austin's a cool place. I'm, it I'm is. finding there are so many neat things. And in the networking group, I mean, we have a hypnotist. We have all kinds of coaches, health, life coaches, health coaches. Yep. Yep. Um, it's just uh, fascinating to meet people of so many different uh, business aspects, for one thing, and it's just a lot of fun. I, I'm having a heck of a time meeting everybody. Yeah, and, and, and it's really kind of a different kind. I describe it as a different kind of city because, like you said, you meet so many different facets of people, right? Uh, right? And we've got a lot of lifestyle people here. It's a healthy type of city. Um it's got the mountains and the hills and the lakes and it's it, cool places. Hey, real quickly, what's one of your favorite places in Austin? Go out and eat or do something. What have you discovered? I'm always I always like to ask this question because it gives me some ideas. Go try something. What do you like, or what? Do you, well, what's, what's a place you discovered you really like? 
eating wise, um, we've been into downtown a few times, uh -huh. and there was Gordo's. I think uh, is, yep. a, is a place, isn't it? Gordo's, and mm -hmm. that's that's where they take donuts and make sandwiches out of them. I know it's amazing. <laughs> And it's like, oh my goodness, I can feel my heart hardening right now. Uh, I know. For a place that's really neat, we have four dogs. Three of them are labs. They're all white. And we have a lab mix. And so uh -huh. we've discovered Walnut Creek Park off of um, 35 awesome. and Palmer. And it is an off-leash dog park that has a creek running through it, wonderful rock formations. And it's just, it's hilly and it's, it's just amazing. We were there this morning. And That's we, great. It's a wonderful place for our dogs to run. And for people, people don't get all excited about if your dog comes up to the other dog. and um, you, can, you, you can let them run. It's yep, beautiful. let them go. Our, it's what we do with our Aussie. Just let them run, right? Let them go. Yep. Is there anything I missed? Gosh, she covered so much. Uh, Mary is adventurous. We know that. She also is part of Shackley, 40 years. We learned that tonight. She has awesome products that she can tell you more about on a one-to-one. -one. Mary, what did we miss? What's, yeah, a, what's the final words? <laughs> final huh? words. Take care of yourself. You know, keep moving. Eat healthy. Take good supplements. And we'll see you on the surfboard. All right, Mary, thank you. All right, guys, we want to thank you for listening to the Hurdy Burke Broadcast Network. And